Here you see a typical vacuum set up for tub showers. Again, we prefer screening over zoning. It's much more effective. And this is the first day those two guys are doing it under the supervision of the, one of our men. Uh, the output on this machine is between 12 and 16 units per hour with two or three molds and 0.125 thick sheet. Notice the square corners. We do not have to have the rounded corners like you see in many units. The square corner makes door installation a lot easier. It also affords you more room inside the unit. We now put in a 36 inch mold while they are unloading the 60 inch tub shower. Uh, by the way, all those molds are modular. That means to change from right to left, we don't change the whole mold. All we change is the bottom part. And if you want to make a different back, you can take this back out and put a different design in it without changing any of the other stuff. And we are not removing the mold to the top. We're removing it to one end, which means the top of the top, of course. Here you see them, how they moved the shells for the storage area. And here you see the modular construction of the tub. This setup is not only the most simple, it's also the most effective and most productive. Generally, it takes the same amount of time to cool the part than it takes to heat it. In this case, about four minutes. The holding fixtures, we're using suction cups to hold the skin. And air holding fixture in action.
here you see him place the skin on the turntable holding fixture the skin is drawn from one twenty five thousandths uh, we have for years made it out of hundred thousand but one twenty five is probably the best for the average labor you have you see how thin we are drawing the dome but we are getting most of it down here on the bottom where it's needed we of course use our S1 low roll system again and the turning fixture makes it very easy for him to get in there we strongly believe to make the job as easy as you can for your operator you will get much better productivity that way thin the dome is there but of course there you don't need the material nobody walks on there hopefully we're working uh, with about six minute gel times on this unit here So basically, after he is finished spraying the sides and the bottom, we can turn it over and inflate the back with air. Again one is done, the next one is coming up. It's much better to take the work to the operator than the operator to the work. Again, we're working only with one gun operator, one roller, and this roller also puts on the core material. And between the two of them, they're averaging 35 in a seven hour shift. is putting on about an eighth of an inch of core without chop because on the neutral axis uh, chopping glass in there is just a waste of money. the labor savings with this system is about 120,000 a year which easily pays for that equipment in about nine months
and so we only use uh, 0.125. <coughs> We're bringing between 25 and 30 thousands to the bottom, which is a lot better than most people which are using 187. The other advantage of using a thinner sheet is it's much easier to keep the flanges straight and you do not build as much uh, tension into this uh, shell. Here you can see the minimum rollout, the minimum rollout, which is required. Basically, all we do is tuck in the tough corners, the uh, 90 degree corners. What he's doing here is strictly cosmetic to give it a nice surface, only once over. bottom gets put on with core material. <coughs> yeah. Now they have switched to use uh, three spray which has uh, a scrap mix in it up to 40 percent in this case. By the way, this equipment was built in 1988. 